Welcome to the December edition of the Library Roadshow. I'm Mary Stein, and it's time to take you around your East Baton Rouge Parish Library System. Welcome to the December edition of the Library Roadshow, a production of your East Baton Rouge Parish Library. I'm Assistant Library Director Mary Stein and I have a lot to share with you. First, a heartfelt thanks to the thousands of voters of East Baton Rouge Parish who came out to support the library's 10-year dedicated tax. Your yes vote means that we can continue to offer the library resources and programs you need at the level of services that you enjoy for 10 more years. But we won't be operating on cruise control. We'll keep raising the bar to improve our print, non-print and digital collections, as well as our programs and service delivery. A small portion of the funds from the dedicated tax will go towards capital improvements, so we'll soon be able to start the process to upgrade and renovate seven of our 11 oldest library branches, beginning with Jones Creek and Greenwell Springs Road Regional Branches. As with our other projects, we'll work with the Department of Public Works to secure an architect for each project, and we'll share ideas and plans with members of each community along the way. More about that later. I'd also like to share some major bragging rights. In addition to being honored as a landmark library, your East Baton Rouge Parish Library has been designated a star library in Library Journal's annual survey of more than 7,000 libraries. This is for the fourth year in a row, and in fact, the library was awarded top marks in its category and received a five-star rating. We're so proud that this national recognition puts East Baton Rouge Parish in such a great light, and we owe this stellar ranking to you, our patrons. So thanks for making us part of your regular routine. Free access to books, audio, and library resources are just a few of the benefits available to you when you get a library card. Need free access to a computer? You get that. Want free access to premium digital resources like Mango Languages and Lynda.com? You get that. Need to book a meeting space? You get that. Heck, you can even check out a telescope or use a digital printer with your library card. If you live in East Baton Rouge Parish, pick up your free library card from your local branch library today. Premium access to everything the library system has to offer is waiting for you. Many of our newest digital resources fill the need for self-improvement. That's certainly true for this month's Spotlight. Adam St. Pierre joins us now in the digital download to explain. Have you ever heard of a training site called lynda.com? Did you know you have access to a premium subscription with all the exercise files available to you for free with your library card? If you're already paying for it, you'll know that's a $50 per month savings you'll get with your library card today. With a premium subscription to lynda.com, you'll get access to thousands of video tutorials on a variety of topics including web design and development, design techniques, tutorials on the full Adobe suite, Microsoft Office, and not to mention business skills. So what are you waiting for? Get your library card and sign up for a free premium subscription to lynda.com today. Sign up for lynda.com at the Digital Library, available 24-7 at ebrpl.com. People often take time during December and January to do some personal assessment, and knowing that the library offers so many different choices for professional and workforce skills development makes acting on these goals so much easier. I've met dozens of people who've not only been delighted to learn we offered Linda, but who then immediately thanked the library for saving them hundreds of dollars since they could now drop that personal subscription. I'll be using some of the classes soon myself to upgrade my own skills. Check it out for yourself. All you need is that library card. One thing you don't need your library card for is access to our free programming. One of the biggest free programs we offer annually is the Attic Treasures and Collectibles event. We'll take you there now as we go Beyond the Stacks. 
We're at our main library located on Goodwood Boulevard where we are having our annual Attic Treasures and Collectibles program um, where we invite the patrons to come in to bring their antiques, their collectibles, those things that they've had in their homes for some time and they think are valuable or worth something where they can come and get them evaluated by area specialists in our community. So when you arrive at the main library, you'll come in through our foyer where you'll be given a ticket right before you enter into our large meeting room. And when you enter into the meeting room, there are 18 specialists in a variety of areas, and we have people working the room that will direct you to the specialist that can best help you. My name is Jack Hood. I'm a jeweler, gemologist, appraiser with, with my own company, Jack Hood Jewelers, here in Baton Rouge. You see a bunch of things that I, that I don't get to see normally. Now you got a diamond. That's definitely a diamond. Yeah, it's probably close to a carat and a quarter. It's probably in the 10,000 a carat range for that stone, retail. Last year, a young lady came in and she had her great-great-grandfather's boxing championship belt. And it turned out that he was a well-known boxer from New Orleans. And so we desired to acquire that belt so that we could put it on display in our Baton Rouge room. So anything's possible. Discover what programs are coming to a library near you online at www.ebrpl.com or pick up a copy of the Source newsletter for all of our upcoming events. Thanks, Kayla. It's hard to believe that Attic Treasures is so many years old. It's one of my favorite events. Every year I agonize over which three old things I'll pull out of the closet. I found a lot out about these family heirlooms over the past few years, and I especially like learning how to take care of them safely so they'll still be around for my great-grandkids to treasure one day. And speaking of families, in December we're particularly drawn to fun and family friendly programs. So in addition to regular movie screenings throughout the system, we're showing holiday movies on the plaza again. Holiday music will grace the air in libraries across the parish. Mrs. Claus will be making the rounds visiting each and every branch along with her holiday clowns. And there'll be fun classes covering everything from robotics and coding to films and crafts and the LASM Discovery Dome will return for encore performances at each location. This inflatable planetarium combines stargazing with a sound and light show. It is so cool. Dates and registration info is available at each branch, online, and in the new edition of The Source. Coming up on the Library Roadshow, Assistant Library Director Patricia Husband will clue us in on what's happening over at the Blue Bonnet Regional Branch. Hi, I'm Sari Feldman and I'm the President of the American Library Association. We need your help. In late October, the American Library Association will launch its new multi-year public awareness campaign, Libraries Transform. We need to let policymakers, stakeholders, and funders know that libraries are neither obsolete nor nice to have. Libraries are essential. We need your help to spread the message. Hang posters, send emails, post on social media. You can find out more by visiting libraries-transform.org. Join me in showing the world that libraries transform. Welcome back to the Library Roadshow. Your East Baton Rouge Parish Library includes 14 full-service public libraries throughout the system, and we're so proud to offer consistent hours, resources, and services in all of them. Patricia Husband is tasked with the big job of keeping our branch system in great shape, physically and operationally. So welcome, Patricia. Thanks for joining me today. Well, thanks for inviting me. In your job as Assistant Director of Branch Services, you always have something very concrete on your to-do list, and our patrons really appreciate the fact that you're, we're protecting their investment in the library system by constantly maintaining and improving all of these facilities. All on that pay-as-you-go plan, that's very exciting for our patrons. So tell me about what's going on at Blue Bonnet Regional right now. Why are we renovating Blue Bonnet now? Well, this is a very serendipitous time for us. Genealogy got moved over to 
to the main library yeah. a couple of years ago, and we knew that the teens needed a little bit more space. And so it seemed like the perfect opportunity to change the, the old genealogy section into a teen space. It's going to give them a discrete area We'll have doors that they can close off. So if they want to be a little noisy, they can be noisy. And that's a very important feature because for adults, they love it when teens can be seen but not heard. Exactly. <laughs> and so we have an opportunity to create a little bit of a programming room. That's but awesome. But the way we're going to do it will be that we have sliding glass doors. So when we're not having a program, that particular area can be used for other things. We're also going to put in a study room. We've got a cool laptop bar that's made out of a solid surface material that includes bits of recycled metal. Always love so that. So it's very... It's modern hip. and hip, yeah. and we're putting in a maker slash maker room slash digital lab. So it's not very big, but they'll be able to create and make some things there. This and is going to totally change the function of how we work with our teens, and then the ripple effect will go through the branch. And and the other thing is, exactly, the other thing is that maker room will be accessible to the adults as well because it's in between the adult and the teen area. Kind of like a Jack and Jill bathroom, huh? Yes. So we've got a study room in that uh, that area right now. The furniture, some of the furniture is, has come. The soft seating furniture is very seen exciting. I've some pictures. That is some hot stuff. Fun things. And... Uh, interesting chairs. Well, uh, we've seen here at the main library and at the Fairwood branch that the teens respond so well when you give them a space that is cool and hip and that was designed with them in mind. So, and, and that's what we're shooting for. We're going to have more computers. We're going to have a study room for them. And they do uh, still study. They do study, <laughs> yes. And uh, instead of whiteboards, we're gonna have back painted glass. That'll be so cool. The nice thing about back painted glass is that you can clean it. You don't have to worry about ghosting so much. Great. And so it's just gonna be a new thing that we're gonna try and see how that works. Well, when is it gonna be ready? I'd like to say sooner than it probably will be. We're thinking in the next couple, of, next month or so, we'll be able to move into the teen area. So Santa will kind of tie the bow on that room and then we'll open it after after Christmas. Sometime. It's possible, yes. That's what we're hoping, that we'll be able to use it around Christmas or after. Okay. We have some other remodeling to do yeah, as well. Yeah, because that'll leave a big space. Well, the old teen area, which is in the middle mm -hmm. at the, and at the very entrance, we're going to add some study rooms for adults. They so we'll love have that. small meeting rooms that they can come and use. We can really use that because Blue Bonnet is, uh, is one of our branches that's constantly in demand for meeting room use. And, and many of these meetings are small and they yes. fit perfectly in one of these collaboration rooms. So we'll have either three or four meeting rooms out there as well. And we're gonna open up the entrance to the children's room so that as you walk in, you can see right where the children's room is. That's and it'll great. be a cool new entrance with bright colors. So that's gonna give a little bit of a facelift. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna be a major remodel, but it is gonna be a little bit of a facelift and a little bit of a change in the direction. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to enlarge the Cirque workroom because Blue Bonnet is one of our highest circing they branches sure and they need a little bit more space. That's Right, so if we've got the function, but we have the welcome. We're changing the way the teens will be able to use. I mean, it's going to blow the lid off teen services at Blue Bonnet, so that's going to be awesome. And then going forward, we're going to do similar, much more expansive projects throughout the system, starting with Jones Creek and Greenwell Springs, right? Exactly. Okay. We're looking at those kinds of projects and uh, questions like, why doesn't this branch have powered tables? We need more power. We need more data. We need more computers. We need a place to study. Can we have a small meeting room? Mm -hmm. All of those things we've taken into account in our branch assessment. Mm -hmm. We talked with our architects. And so we've got some tentative, and I say tentative in the strongest sense of the word. It's an idea for budgeting, the eventual plans will, will be developed right. as we move forward. Right. So to find out more about the library's maintenance updates and capital improvements plan, all you need to do is visit the library's website, ebrpl.com. Coming up next on the Library Roadshow, we'll hear from local author Barbara Sims and some of our youngest patrons.
Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. <laughs> A single ember that escapes from a wildfire can travel more than a mile. That single ember can ignite and destroy your home or even your community. You can't control where that ember will land, only what happens when it does. Get Fire Adapted now at fireadapted.org. Budget, so don't accept defeat. Now you can get covered and still buy me trees. You take care of your pets. Now it's their turn to take care of you. Visit getcoveredamerica.org to learn about your health insurance options. Welcome back to the December edition of the Library Roadshow. We're chatting on the phone with Barbara Sims, the author of The Next Elvis, Searching for Stardom at Sun Records. She details her experiences working at Sun Records in the 50s. Barbara, why is Sun Records so important to the development of music in America? It's best known, of course, as the record company that discovered Elvis Presley, but also the Million Dollar Quartet, which included, in addition to Presley, Johnny Cash, Jerry D. Lewis, and Carl Perkins. There were several other stars that got their start at Sun, including Charlie Rich and uh, many others, as well as two nationally known producers, Jack Clement and Bill Justice, and some uh, young stars who never did make it to stardom on Sun, but later had important careers, including Ed Bruce and um, Dickie Lee. But Sun is known as well for discovering before Elvis and recording first such blues artists as B.B. King, Little Junior Parker, Roscoe Gordon, and several others that are loved by blues um, aficionados. So Sun Records really had a tremendous impact on American popular music, and that's why the Little Yellow Label is probably the most recognizable record label in American musical history. Barbara, what inspired you to set it all down on paper? Actually, through the years, I didn't really talk about my son experience too much after I began teaching at LSU. It didn't come up too often in the conversations that English teachers find themselves involved in, but people had encouraged me through the years to set down some of my memories about son, and after I retired and when I found myself a little, with a little time on my hands, I began to just write down anecdotes. And I had met some musicians, uh, particularly, who were fascinated with the subject of Sun and who wanted to know more about it based on the reputation of Sun that continues to grow and that was brought to the forefront in the 1960s by the enthusiasm with which the Beatles and Rolling Stones and other uh, British Invasion artists re-recorded a lot of our tunes. So as I wrote down one incident after another, it began to take form, and I devoted more time to organizing the different periods and episodes and personalities. And um, it took me several years, actually, because I had fits and starts. But after several years, I felt that I had a script that could be suitable for presentation to a press, and I sent it to that Louisiana State University Press, and they accepted it, and that's how uh, my book, The Next Elvis, came came about. I really have enjoyed uh, being able to speak about the book to groups because I find uh, among older uh, people who grew up with this music, that it provides uh, happy memories for them and enthusiasm that they experienced in those um, days before, and, and they've revisited those days. And then newer 
uh, younger listeners are being introduced uh, to sun and appreciate it. So that has been my reward for spending the time it took to write the next Elvis. Thanks, Barbara. I really look forward to hearing about all this in person when you come to the library on December 6th. We've checked in with some local kid talent to find out what they're reading. Hi, my name is Leah. I like the Magic School Bus because they go on a lot of adventures. They went to the desert so then they can save the animals because Phoebe thought that they were in danger. Uh, Phoebe's trying to save the lizard because the road runner is trying to eat the lizard. Uh, it ends out like they turn into a lizard and inside the bus. My mom brings me to the library because Thanks, kids. It's great to see even the youngest in our community making good use of your East Baton Rouge Parish Library system. Stay right there. You're watching the Library Road Show. Look at me. Hey. Raymond, look at mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Maybe he can't hear us. Ooh. Maybe we're not stimulating him enough. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. A single ember that escapes from a wildfire can travel more than a mile. Get Fire Adapted now. Learn simple steps at fireadapted.org. My name is Melissa Easton, and I'm head of the Special Collections Department at the Baton Rouge Room Archive, located inside the main library on Goodwood, where Baton Rouge history comes alive. Illustrated maps are as old as the art of cartography itself. However, in the 1920s through the 1950s, they began to reappear as a popular culture art form. Illustrated maps from this era are brightly colored and often depict stylized representations of historical events, industries, agricultural products, and topography. This map was drawn by artist Carl Corley for the Louisiana Department of Highways, now the LADOTD, from 1961 to 1981. Carl, who grew up in rural Mississippi, was a prolific science fiction author known for his complex social themes as well as his signature style cover art. The map we have here is entitled Nature's Cornucopia and it was drawn to celebrate the diverse agricultural, historical, and natural resources of the state of Louisiana. To view this map and many others, visit the Special Collections Department on the second floor of the main library at Goodwood, where history comes alive. Thanks, Melissa. I love the variety featured in the collection. And you know I'm a sucker for interesting maps. But the Frank Hayden study for the Oliver Pollock sculpture is truly a special addition to the collection. Did you know that there was so much interesting information about the history of Baton Rouge all under one roof? Come on down and check out the great old photographs. Look up some of your Baton Rouge genealogy or just study up on the history of our great capital city. It's all available at the main library on Goodwood and it's free with your East Baton Rouge Parish Library card. Sleigh bells are ringing and it's beginning to look a lot like the holiday season. To get your pages turning this month, I have a collection of holiday favorites retold in film and on the stage. Black Nativity by Langston Hughes is a holiday classic presented as a reimagined telling of the Christian nativity story with an entirely black cast. Traditional Christmas carols are sung in gospel style with several songs created specifically for the stage. The stage adaptation was first performed off-Broadway on December 11th, 1961, and it was one of the first plays written by an African American to be performed there. In the contemporary film adaptation, the focus is on a streetwise Baltimore teen named Langston. Being raised by his single mother, he travels to New York City to spend the Christmas holiday with his estranged relatives, the Reverend Cornell and Aretha Cobbs. Unwilling to live by the imposing Cobb's rules, a frustrated Langston attempts to return to his mother, whereby he embarks on a surprising spiritual and inspirational journey. Along the way, he meets new friends with a little divine intervention, and he discovers the true meaning of faith, healing, and family. 
The film stars the incomparable Angela Bassett, Forrest Whitaker, Jennifer Hudson, Mary J. Blige, and a host of other stars from a variety of fields. It is one of my absolute favorite holiday films, followed closely by The Preacher's Wife, The Best Man Holiday, and Soul Food. And of course, there's Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. It's a holiday treat. The story begins in the city of Whoville, featuring fun-loving characters called the Who's, who are going about their annual holiday preparations. Up in the caves north of their town lives the Grinch, a grouchy creature with a deep-seated hatred for Christmas. And as such, he gets fed up with all the noise and hoopla and sets out to attempt to ruin it for the Who's. He steals the gifts, the decorations, the meals, and more. At the last minute, he hears the gentle voice of the Who's uniting in song, and he is moved to join them. And at last, he learns about the Christmas spirit. The 2000 film stars Jim Carrey as the Grinch, Taylor Momsen as Cindy Lou Who, Molly Shannon, Jeffrey Tambor, and many more. It's comedic gold with a small touch of raunchy to keep everyone on their toes. And of course, no Christmas is complete without a reading of the Polar Express, written and illustrated by Chris Van Allsburg. This is a great story to read while burrowed under the blankets with loved ones. Late one Christmas Eve, a young boy hears a bell ringing and runs to determine where it's coming from. He ends up boarding a mysterious train that ends up at the North Pole. Once there, Santa offers the boy any gift he desires. He asks for a bell from the harness of a reindeer. Unfortunately, during the return, he loses the bell. On the following day, he finds it under the Christmas tree. It is a story that is beautifully told and illustrated. The 2004 film adaptation is a fully computer animated musical written, produced, and directed by Robert Zemeckis and stars blockbuster actor Tom Hanks in over six distinctive roles. Give the gift that takes you to new worlds this holiday season, the love of reading. Happy holidays, and that's how the page turns. Thanks, Tamika. For the holidays, I like to have a nice variety hanging around the house. So while I've certainly downloaded 10 ebooks from Overdrive onto my iPad, plus a few downloaded magazines from Xenio and Flipster for my own use, I've also checked out books, music CDs, magazines, collections of short stories, gorgeous coffee table books, and dozens of books for young readers, as well as a nice assortment of DVDs to keep my family occupied. And if the grandkids threw those, we'll hit the digital library for tumble books. Disney ebooks and early world of learning. Plenty of options. And now for today's contest. A book is a present you can open again and again. So visit our Facebook page and share something about that favorite book you got as a present when you were a child. And while you're there, enjoy. We're not your grandfather's library anymore. What's coming up next on the Library Road Show? I'll reveal some great new programs planned for the spring. Tune in next month and I'll take you to the new teen room at the Blue Bonnet Regional Branch. And next month, I'll introduce you to a new resource in the digital library. Catch me ringing in the new year downtown on Digi Blue for the free rockin' New Year's party. Thanks so much for joining us on the Library Road Show. And remember, your East Baton Rouge Parish Library is open seven days a week at each and every one of 14 branches, plus 24-7 on the web. Check us out at ebrpl.com. <laughs> <laughs>